We talked to children who say they started working the fields when they were 8, 10, and 11 years old. And while most of us may have had a job when we were teens, mowing lawns or at a grocery store, consider this. These kids are working a full day, up to 9 or 10 hours a day, in 100 degree heat. And it's not in some foreign country, it's right here in California. It's 4.30 in the morning. Families all over this migrant labor camp are already up and heading out to their cars. Dozens of teenagers join the ride, wiping the sleep out of their eyes. But they're not heading to school or to play, but to a full day's work in the fields. A few of the other younger workers keep to the shadows with their young faces covered in the fields. Among these workers is a boy we will call Ralph. Ralph is a veteran. He's been working in these fields two years already. And he's just 15 years old. As the sun rises over the Sierras, heating the Central Valley to 106 degrees, Ralph begins his nine hour workday. Ralph is among nearly two dozen children we talked to and followed throughout the 20,000 square miles that make up the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys. And we get tired in there, our arm shirt and everything like that. It's all legal. U.S. labor law allows children 12 years of age or even younger to work the fields. <laughs> this is the second year Ralph has worked the fields full time. He started working at age 13. Who else out here has worked in the fields? Ralph isn't the only one. At a summer school for migrant children, we found dozens of children either currently working in the fields or who used to work the fields. How long have you worked in the fields? Since like I was like in sixth grade. 11 years old? Yeah. Children as young as 12, 11, even eight. Yeah, I was sixth grade. I was 11. How long have you been doing this? Como siete años. Like seven years, since I was eight years old, until now. These kids are know that there's a necessity in their family to be able to help make ends meet, to be able to put food on the table. Norma Flores Lopez serves as the director of the Children in the Fields campaign at the Association of Farm Worker Opportunity Programs based in Washington, D.C. From the best estimates that we've been able to get, we know that there's anywhere between 400,000 children to up to as many 500,000. Children in the fields are so prevalent that just this year, the U.S. Department of Labor tried to change the law and further restrict and even prohibit some children from working in agriculture. What they were proposing was a little too strong, a little too restrictive. Pete Aiello and his family have owned and run Yusuke Farms in Gilroy for generations. Aiello opposed the U.S. Labor Department's proposed new rules. I think that the current regulations as they are I think are good and they're sound, and I think it's okay for kids that young to be working. Now, how well, many, yeah, yeah. Now, how many hours they work? Full time. I, so full time meaning 40, 50, 50 60, 50, 60, 60. Six I mean, days a week, sometimes seven. I mean, I don't, that's, I mean, that's more than full time if they're going a seven day week. After other critics lodged similar complaints in Washington, D.C., the Labor Department withdrew the proposed new rules in April. Critics also said the rules would have hurt family farms. But even Aiello admits that there are some fellow growers who look the other way and employ children 12 years old or even younger in their fields. I know it does happen, and, and that's unfortunate. The U.S. child labor law, which is pretty good, has a big gaping hole when it comes to agriculture. Zayma Corson Neff works for Human Rights Watch. She advocates ending child labor. That allows children to work at younger ages for unlimited hours and in dangerous conditions, even though they couldn't do that same work um, in an office or in a Burger King. Remember Ralph, it's four in the afternoon. He's now back from the fields, but he now has to go to a special night school provided for migrant children. He's just entering his freshman year of high school. I want to go to college. What do you want to study in college? Border Patrol. Ralph's mother has the same dream for him and her other two sons to keep them from following in their father's and grandfather's footsteps. We don't want them to have lives like us to drop out of school because they have to work? Well, no, this way they'll go to school and be something in life. 8.15 at night, 
As the sun is getting ready to set, Ralph arrives back home after school. Nine hours in the grapevines, another four hours hitting the books. He's ready for bed and rest. I just eat and go to sleep. Tomorrow, Ralph will get up and do it all over again. It's like too hard working in the fields, in the sun. No break, no vacations, and he's not even old enough to drive a car. Now, we want to make clear that almost every young person we talked with in this story told us they were born here, making them U.S. citizens, and none of them worked on small family farms. We reached out to a dozen other grower organizations, food processors, and producers to get their views on this issue. None of them would comment. Some say they have worked the field since they were eight, and we found them not in China, not in Indonesia, not in Guatemala or Mexico, but right here in the United States, here in California. And for the most part, it's all legal. How long have you been doing this? Like seven years, since I was eight years old, until now. Listen closely. Yeah, I was in sixth grade. I was 11. To their voices. In sixth grade. 11 years old. Yeah, pretty much. What's the hardest part of it? Some say they worked when they were 11, 10. One teen says he started in the fields of Mexico when he was eight, before he moved here to work almost two years ago. When I started at the age of eight, it was difficult because I had to carry buckets that weigh 55 pounds. I had cuts in my fingers. I came out really tired. It was really hot, and I didn't really like it, but it was worth it to go help my mom. What's the hardest crop to pick? Well, right now it's tomatoes, the hardest thing I've done. Why? Yeah, I had to be like bending over, standing up, like carrying the buckets and throwing them. Me llevaban a al peaches, a las peaches. They took me to the peaches. I'd use the gloves because with the stuff the peaches have, it would stick to me. The hard work and long hours has some parents doing everything they can to keep their kids away from the fields. Kids like Carmen. She doesn't want me to see me work there. That's why Carmen's mother forces her to stay in school and away from the fields. She doesn't want me to go through what she goes through. She says it's really painful, hard work. And then every night I massage her back so that she can feel better in the morning. And go back and do it again. Yep. And then I told her that when I get older, I'm going to buy her house. I'm going to be working and she's going to be home. Yeah. Low wages mean these families need more workers in the field to make ends meet, an economic necessity that continues for generations. It was hard because you have to work in the sun and there was no shade. There's eight-year-old people, kids working in the fields just to have help their parents, and I think that's not fair. Advocates tell me they've pulled children as young as nine years old out of these tobacco fields in North Carolina, and the international group Human Rights Watch found children even younger in the fruits and vegetable fields, working coast to coast to help their parents earn enough money necessary to survive. In the fields of eastern North Carolina, this is what they call topping. Hidden cameras follow the workers down the rows of tobacco. You do it without gloves? Yeah, it's best. Yeah. How old are you? 14. Like all of the young workers we followed, both in North Carolina and California during our investigation, we're not revealing this teenager's real name or the exact location of where she works. And in this case, for extra protection, we're hiding her face to prevent retaliation. Oh, you're the youngest? Later. The teen changes her story, revealing she's actually only 13 years old. You couldn't be here? I could if I had like, my face, I had to hide it. But tienes 13? It's perfectly legal for a 12-year-old to be working out there harvesting tobacco leaves for an unlimited amount of hours, despite the fact that they are absorbing high levels of nicotine through their skin, uh, which would be the equivalent to about 12 cigarettes a day. You don't pay any children to work here. No. In fact, some of the young workers admit they lie about their age and hide from the bosses. But it's hard to miss a 5-year-old in the field or mistake him for an adult. 5 years old. 5 years old? Yeah. 
Where? A five-year-old who this field worker and native North Carolina resident says he's seen personally working the tobacco fields around Kenansville. Yeah, boy, it's probably unstoppable. <laughs> it's like a Mack truck. Yeah. At five years old. Our connections in North Carolina told us that after the crew left the fields there, there were death threats against some of the workers in the area. That is why we're being extra careful to protect the exact locations and identities of those young workers and their families. Investigative reporter Stephen Stock is here with more on this rarely talked about but very, very important issue. Stephen? Sue, during the weeks we spent in the fields, we talked to children as young as 12 years old. Some of them told us they've been working these fields since they were eight. And we found them not in China, not in Mexico, but right here in the United States. It's grape harvest season in California. We reached out several times to more than a dozen different companies that distribute and sell produce that is picked from our fields. Among them, Sunmade, Del Monte, and Dole, they did not return our request for comment. In a political season where the presidential campaign is gathering all the attention, there is a quiet movement starting on Capitol Hill right now to change the law governing children working in our fields. But even supporters of that proposed law admit that nothing is likely to happen quickly and any change faces a tough political opposition. Harvest season is pretty much over in California's Central Valley. Only a few grapes and raisins left to pick. Most of these migrant farm workers and their families are packing up and moving on, following the crops north to Oregon and Washington. 3,000 miles away, in the halls of Congress, the issue of child labor in agriculture has gained new attention. I was shocked because I really do believe this is one of our country's dirty little secrets. That's why, after watching our investigation documenting child labor here in California and in North Carolina, Los Angeles Congresswoman Lucille Roy Ball Allard is calling for change. There are today in this country children that are working under deplorable conditions and that are not equally protected under our child labor laws. And these are the children who work in agriculture. And you want to change that? And I want to change that. Congresswoman Roy Ball Allard has introduced in Congress once again the CARE Act, legislation she first pushed here 12 years ago. The CARE Act I introduced in order to give children in agriculture here in the United States the same protections that children have in every other industry. But there are others here in Congress who are not so eager to pass new legislation to protect children working in agriculture. There's just no need for it. Senator Charles Grassley of Iowa is a co-sponsor of a bill that would do the opposite of Congresswoman Roy Bala Lards. It's called the Preserving America's Family Farms Act. The bill would prohibit the government from changing rules governing children working in agriculture. Rules that date back to 1938. It wouldn't be unusual to be putting in 14 or even 18 hour days. And uh, there's probably no difference between my dad putting it in and a 12 year old boy putting it in. Why is agriculture exempt though? That same kid couldn't work in the family Dunkin' Donuts or the family clothing store or in your office if it was okay. he or she were 12. Well, I think because of the family being involved with it and working side by side with mom and dad. Back in California's Central Valley, there is little debate among these families working on large farms. For them, it may be complicated politically, yet it's very simple economics. While the parents may not want their children to have to work the fields, most families have to have them there in order to make ends meet. They do what they gotta do. Connie Saavedra knows the migrant farm worker life firsthand. She worked these very same fields as a young child, and she says she has recently seen children as young as six years old out in the field helping harvest raisins. The little ones get the bundles, give them to the older ones, and they dump them in the rain, and, and, they, and they pull in the paper. It's unconscionable. In your investigations, is mom and dad also working beside that 12-year-old? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They make so little money, they need the children to help them make ends meet. Pay. When put into that context, even Iowa Senator Grassley seemed to back away from the current rules. What do you think? I think maybe as long as I have not been in those fields, I better not answer. 